It is March at the Vernal Pool, and explosive breeding has begun. When the temperatures rise to about 50 degrees, wood frogs migrate from their forest homes to the Verna pools to breed. This breeding event lasts only a few days before it is completed and the frogs head back to the forest. This is why they are referred to as explosive breeders. Male wood frogs are so eager to breed, it is common for multiple males to try and breed with the same female, and they engage in fierce competition for that right. Each male attempts to kick the others off to gain the sole right to fertilize the female's eggs. The eggs appear similar to salamander eggs, but without a second layer of protective jelly around the eggs, so each egg is clearly visible and distinct from the others in the mass. They are usually laid collectively, clustered in a shallow area of the pond to enable the fastest growth. Sped up, these less than two week old embryos can be seen twitching in their eggs. Because wood frog eggs do not have as much protective jelly as salamander eggs, they can be more easily predated. Bullfrog tadpoles are easily able to feed on the jelly and the embryos. Bullfrogs are not typical inhabitants of vernal pools, but because this particular pond does not dry, bullfrogs are able to colonize. Bullfrog tadpoles normally take one to two years to transform into froglets. So these wood frog eggs provide a valuable source of energy, which will be much needed for the metamorphosis of the largest tadpoles this coming spring. Under cover of darkness and rain clouds, the spotted salamanders migrate from their forest burrows to the ponds around the same time as the wood frogs. They are quick to begin courtship, swimming around and seeking mates almost immediately upon entering. Unlike Jefferson salamanders and wood frogs, spotted salamanders do not engage in implexus prior to mating. Instead, when encountering a female, a male will nudge and rub her with his snout and entire body, and deposit a spermatophore. This is a small packet of the male's genetic material, and if receptive, the female will pick it up and use it to fertilize her eggs. These spermatophores can be quite ubiquitous, dotting the substrate of the pond. Competition between males is intense, so many males will attempt to court one female, forming dense aggregations in the shallow margins of ponds, with spotted salamanders nudging, rubbing, swimming against each other constantly. Each male is scrambling to lay down as many spermatophores as possible, and to convince a female to pick one up. This biological instinct is so strong, males will even form these breeding aggregations and lay down spermatophores without females present. Fairy shrimp and marbled salamander larvae dart through the water amongst the salamanders, attracted to my light and spooked by the large terrestrial visitors to their underwater world. 
Once they have fertilized their eggs, females will lay them attached to underwater vegetation, sticks, or twigs. Spotted salamander egg masses are larger and firmer than Jefferson salamanders, with both more embryos and a thicker layer of outer protective jelly. Unlike many amphibians, spotted salamanders have extreme variations in the appearance of their egg masses. Most egg masses are clear, but some are white or cloudy. This is caused by the presence of a water-insoluble protein in white egg masses, and this is a natural variation that results from the genetics of the female who laid them. The ecological reason for this variation in egg mass color is not well understood, but the opaqueness of the white masses could provide some protection from visual predation. White egg masses have been shown to experience less predation from wood frog tadpoles than clear masses, and this would likely hold true for bullfrog tadpoles. Larvae from white egg masses have also been shown to be more successful in nutrient-poor ponds, though again, the reason for this is not well understood. Even from the moment they are laid, the egg masses are a sought-after energy resource by the other organisms in the vernal pool. Aquatic insect larvae, like this mayfly and this caddisfly, are common predators. Though many will be eaten, the sheer vast number of egg masses that are laid in a pond in any given year ensure that enough of them will survive to carry on the species and return to the same pond they grew up in to breed to continue the cycle.